there. Long time, no see, terrible lighting. The eagle eyed amongst you might have noticed that I'm not in my regular spot. It's because I'm at my new university prac. So I'm sitting on my floor behind my door and my tripod is currently made up of eight books, a packet of blue tack, a chair and a box of laundry powder. I can tell the production values are why you guys stick around. I figured that I am well overdue for a wrap up because the last one I did was actually in July, which is absolutely terrible i can't believe that it's been that long but i have read eight books since then usually in my wrap ups i like to show you guys the book cover and awkwardly flail it around in this hand but obviously because i read some of these books quite a few weeks ago i didn't bring them up here when i moved for my next university prac so i've only got one of them with me and you just have to pretend that i'm holding it in this space over here so the first book I read was Three Plays by Woody Allen. I don't actually even own a copy of this one at home because I was sneaky and read it under the desk at work. Sorry, employers. They were all themed around infidelity in different areas of New York and I couldn't help but picture Woody himself as the lead in all three of the plays. If you've seen any of Woody Allen's movies, you can probably guess the content of these plays. There's sarcastic middle-aged New Yorkers, a bucket full of neuroses, lots of sexual hang-ups, suicidal ideations, and a meta twist. That's certainly not to say I didn't enjoy the plays, I certainly did. They were really witty, obviously, and the dialogue was just so on point sometimes. They were just so similar to each other and other films by Woody Allen that it's kind of hard to view them as distinct works. I think if you love, love, love Woody Allen, you'll probably like these, but if you're not a huge fan of his style, I don't think you'd miss it. The next book that I read was The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Juster. I'm probably going to horrify some people here, but I had never heard of this until it was featured on Parks and Recreation. Leslie reads the start of the book to filibuster her in council meeting, and I knew if Leslie liked it, I definitely should give it a try, and I loved it. If you haven't read this one already, you definitely should, but it's a middle grade book about a boy named Miles who isn't really taking advantage of his life until he goes on this awesome adventure through literality and you learns to appreciate what he's got. It's a very word-based book and a lot of the humour is based around puns and wordplay, so as a word nerd, I absolutely loved that. I would definitely recommend this to any nerdy child or even any nerdy adult, and I can picture myself giving this a lot as gifts in the future. The next book that I read was incredibly disappointing. It was Finding Violet Park by Jenny Valentine. The general plot is about a 16-year-old boy who's dealing with issues of identity and family after his father abandons them, and the relationship he develops with a woman named Violet Park, who's already dead at the start of the book. I really love the themes of this book. It really dealt with the way that our identity is tied up with our relationships with people and how easy it can be to put people on a pedestal sometimes. But the plot was absolutely shithouse. It was very bizarre, relied a lot on really unbelievable coincidences and I think would have required significant suspension of disbelief for me to be able to enjoy it. I assumed this was a middle grade book because the plot development and the language use was at that level of simplicity, but it has a 16 year old narrator which I thought was weird for middle grade, and when I took Goodreads, apparently it's YA. Yeah, no. As a middle grade book, I thought it was clumsily handled but important because of the themes that it dealt with, but as a YA book, this was thoroughly disappointing. The next book that I read was Boy Overboard by Morris Glatzman. I picked this one out when I was putting together the books for my Your Life in Books tag and accidentally sat down and read it all in one sitting. Whoops. I adore this book and I've read it dozens of times in the past. I think it has a lot of heart and can be a really useful tool to use with younger people to help communicate that sense of empathy for asylum seekers, which I think is something our society could do with a whole lot more of. The next book that I read is one that's got a lot of traction in booktube lately, and that's Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. This is adult fiction, not YA contemporary, so in a way it's quite different to Eleanor and Park, but it was certainly just as interesting. It's about this guy who works in the IT department of a local newspaper who's kind of a loser, and part of his job is to read everyone's emails to check they're complying with company rules. He slowly falls in love with one of his co-workers through her emails, even though he's never met her in person. There are definitely some more adult themes in this book when compared with Eleanor and Park, but it was absolutely hilarious and very touching at times. What I think makes Rainbow Rowell's book so special is that she writes characters with genuine, actual flaws, which doesn't sound like much, but I think in modern fiction, that's that's something that we're lacking. Writers tend to try too hard to make their characters seem relatable and likeable, and I think in real life, people aren't like that. Everyone, including you and including me, have very serious flaws which can make us unlikable. And having an author actually represent those human flaws in such a complex and thoughtful way is absolutely wonderful. I can't wait to read Fangirl, which was just released, and I hope Rainbow Rowell never stops writing. Book number six is another one which has quite a lot of hype in the booktube community, and that's Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler. 
I've been wanting to read this book for months and months and months and I finally decided to finish it and it was wonderful. I had quite a similar reaction to this book as I did to Eleanor and Park by the above wonderful Rainbow Rowell. Again, Why We Broke Up is about two deeply flawed characters and the way their relationship comes together and then pretty quickly falls apart. Ed is selfish and arrogant and Min is pretentious and obsessed with self-image and they're both amazingly frustrating characters. They are completely unlikable because I think a lot of us see a little or a lot of ourselves in Ed or in Min or in both of them. And that's what makes the story so important. It feels like reality. It doesn't feel like fiction. And of course, the ending absolutely shattered my heart. I wasn't completely into Daniel Handler's writing style, but the last, say, 50 pages or so were absolutely perfect. It's not a perfect work, but I think it's pretty damn close. If you're willing to look past the expectation of likeable characters and enjoy the book as an examination of human faults. Book number seven is Stepford Wives by R11, and I do actually have that book with me, but I can't show you it because it's currently right there under the camera. The Stepford Wives is about Joanna, who moves to the too perfect town of Stepford with her husband and two children, and is kind of disturbed by how dutiful and diligent and domestic all the women of Stepford seem to be. She does some digging, uncovers some secrets, and tries to escape before it's too late. I've never seen the Stepford Wives movie, but I think even without seeing the movie, everyone has a pretty good idea of what a Stepford Wife is. Despite already knowing the story, this book really made an impact on me. It's certainly early 60s, right in the heart of the women's liberation movement, and I think it probably would have had more of an impact in that time period, but even today, this story really shook me to the core. The book obviously has an incredibly strong feminist message, but I think in a broader sense, the moral of the story is to live your life for yourself and to resist the efforts of other people into changing you into who they think you should be. I was still thinking about this book days after I read it. It might have a simple and well-worn message, but damn, it still packs a punch. And the eighth book that I've read since my last wrap up was The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I have an Audible subscription and the audiobook for this book was only like $13 on there or something, which is super cheap for an audiobook. But I've limited myself to getting one book a month, so I had to wait for my credits to roll around before I could get it. I purposefully avoided all hints about the plot of this book. I didn't even know if it was fantasy or contemporary, so everything has just been such a wonderful surprise. It's not tremendously plot heavy. Most of the focus of the book is on character development and childhood, and oh, the epilogue just broke my heart. But Ineo Gaiman just words everything so perfectly. He writes in a way that just cuts to the perfect truth of the matter and brings out the beauty and the worth in the everyday and I absolutely adore it. If you haven't read any Neil Gaiman before I would probably not recommend starting with this one just because it is quite slow on the plot. I'd probably recommend you read Caroline first and then definitely come back to this one because I think it's well worth your time. So those are the eight books that I've read since my last wrap up. If you have any questions about them please don't hesitate to let me know down below and if you have any suggestions for videos that I can do without having access to any of my books that would also be helpful because I'm kind of stuck up here. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye. The Stepford Wives is about Joanna who moves to the picturesque Moves to the picturesque town, picturesque. Moves to the picturesque town, picturesque, 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 picturesque. No, pretty as a picture.